I wonder if The Matrix hadn't been made or hadn't been as successful as it was, would Underworld still have been made? Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and I'm gonna read way too much into a new world. The first one with Kate Beckinsale, yeah! This is such a guilty pleasure franchise for me, it's, it's unreal, but I don't know. These are just movies that I watch, and they are so mindless to me that I can just let go and enjoy the vampire like in wars and action and fighting that is such a blatant Matrix ripoff that I don't even care that it's a blatant Matrix ripoff. I just sit there and enjoy it. It's just a fun franchise to me. And so I'm watching back the first Underworld to do this reading way too much into, and I can't help but note that I really think Underworld is a true testament to the power of the grudge. The whole thing, first off, it's very reminiscent of Romeo and Juliet, the Capulets, the Montague, ancient grudge, break forth to new mutiny with civil blood, make civil hands, unclean. Of all the community theater and Shakespeare plays I did, why is that the thing that I retain with me to today? But it's very Romeo and Juliet-esque, and it's just about these vampires, these lichens, and it's about their ancient grudge that they have against each other. But the one thing I can't help but note is as the lichens hold their grudge against the vampires, their grudge against the vampires does not really harm the vampires. It poisons and harms the lichens. Their own grudge harms them and does them more harm than good. Same thing with the vampires. As the vampires hold their grudge against the lichens, their grudge against them poisons them. It does them more harm than good. If you break it down and you look at it, so it started off where you have the lichens and they're slaves to the vampires. They're the vampires' daylight guardians. So I imagine there's a huge level of where the lichens have a grudge against the vampires because at one point they were slaves. But what was interesting is Lucian, who was the head lichen, centuries ago fell in love with a vampire. He talked about that even being a slave, he bore no ill will against the vampires. I mean, that was just his lot in life, and then he took a vampire to be his bride, even though it was forbidden, because he absolutely fell in love with her. That barrier of werewolf and vampire was not a barrier to him. He loved this woman, and this woman, Sonia, I believe was her name, loved him back. And so when she found herself with child, of course, Victor, leader of the Lycans, gotta love Bill Knight who, every time I say his name, I think of Bill Nye the Science Guy. But that guy's a fantastic actor, and I loved his role as Victor. But when Victor finds out that his daughter is pregnant with the child of a lichen, he can't, he cannot abide this. This is where his grudge begins against the lichens. And it's so great, it is so bad, that he kills his own daughter. He ties her to the stake, lets the sun shine on her, and she freaking burns up. And then, you know, of course, Lucian escapes and all that crazy stuff. And he's so angry at Victor for killing the love of his life that he can never, ever let that go. And here's the thing about grudges, about bitterness, about unforgiveness. It doesn't get weaker as time goes on. They say time heals all wounds, not this wound. Like that, when, a, when bitterness takes root, it is something that gets stronger with time. It progresses as time goes on. Maybe it gets to that point where you forget why you even held the grudge to begin with. You just know you can't stand that person. But here's one of the first instances where I see that a grudge with these two races has done more harm than good because they're blind. Victor is totally blind. You know how blind Victor is? He put Craven in charge of his house when he went into his vampire slumber while Emil or whatever her name was, you know, was reigning during that time. He put Craven in charge. That sniveling, snot-nosed, weak-willed snot. I mean, he is just, he is so weak-willed that he takes credit for killing Lucian when really he probably would never have the guts to do it. Really, all he did was make a deal with Lucian and brought back a piece of Lucian's skin with the little brand you know, saying that he belonged to Victor as proof that he killed him and so he could get all this glory, all this honor, and all this credit. But you see, that's the thing. Victor is smarter than that. Like, as I'm watching this movie, Victor is smart. When you get into the prequel, Rise of the Lycans, Victor is, he's smart, man. He is not an idiot. But that's the power of the grudge when holding that bitterness and that unforgiveness, it, it, it's, it's not like, 
Unforgiveness poisons the person you hate. It poisons you who's holding it. As Victor is holding this grudge, the grudge is poisoning him. It's poisoning his judgment. So he doesn't even see that this little sniveling snot, snot nose craven is lying to him. Instead, he trusts him. And he trusts him implicitly to the point that he put Celine down in one scene and said, Craven's gonna take care of this because you broke the rules, Craven did not. Yeah, granted that all changes as the movie goes, but up until this point, we see that Victor has this kind of trust in this little snot nose. I mean, my gosh. Then you got Lucian, who, granted, whatever, I guess you do want to take advantage of a weak-willed person to use them for your coup or whatever, but you know, he wanted to go find the common ancestor, the direct descendant of the vampire and werewolf common ancestor so that he could combine the DNA in both. And you know what? I don't know. Maybe there's a small part of him that wants to do it as a revolution, but I think really he just wants to do it to spite Victor. You snuffed out my wife and child because it was a mixing of the bloods. Well, now I'm going to mix the bloods, so ha! What do you think of that? He's trusting Craven. He's trusting Craven to not betray him, to, to follow through, and, and I don't know, but the guy is so weak willed, he shoots, he shoots Lucian in the back. The first opportunity where he's like, okay, it's not going my way with Victor, it's not going my way with Lucian. Okay, I'll just shoot Lucian now, and I'll run this other direction. And I mean, it got to the point where you had these two strong leaders, Lucian and Victor, and they're trusting a snot-nosed little weasel because they are so blind by their grudges that this is what they're left with. And then you have Celine, who has spent centuries hating Lycans based on a lie that the Lycans destroyed her family. So she spent her entire life absolutely blind and just bound by a grudge and mindlessly you find out she's very smart too i mean throughout this whole movie it's her figuring these things out but for centuries she's just blindly slaughtering lichens for something that they never did and it's just like that is the power of the grudge that's what the grudge does it doesn't hurt the opponent it hurts you as you hang on to the unforgiveness and the bitterness and i've been there i've been in those places where it's hard to let go of unforgiveness I've had those places where it's really, really difficult. And I find when I get really mad and, and I imagine my vengeance, I find that it's really not them being poisoned by it. They're, they're off still having a good day. I'm the one that's suddenly miserable. I'm the one that's suddenly in a bad mood. I'm the one that is paying the price. I'm the one that's drinking the poison. That's what unforgiveness, bitterness, and that's what grudges do. So when you look at Michael in this movie, who ends up with both vampire and lichen in him, and he becomes the perfect mixture of the two, Look at how powerful he is when he is that. I mean, at the end of this movie, he moves so fast you can't even see him move. He is a strong, powerful creature. Just think, had they not had this grudge against each other, they could have been these strong, powerful creatures all their existence. They could have made mankind extinct and these immortals could be ruling the entire earth. But because of their grudge, they haven't come together to become that thing that could take them to the very next level. So. They're not growing. They're not advancing to the next level. This bitterness keeps them embroidered in a war and keeps them in weaker versions of themselves rather than allowing them to grow and be stronger. And in my life, as I have that root of bitterness in me at times, I found there's one cure, and that is to let Jesus come in and take care of that. I mean, who better to let come in and take care of that than the very guy who, as he was being nailed to the cross and people were killing him, forgave the very people that were killing him. Like seriously, they're mocking him. They're putting nails in his hands and his wrists. They beat him to the point that you can't even recognize him. And one of the first things he says on the cross is, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So I found for me, that first step into letting go of unforgiveness is to let his forgiveness come into my heart and let that kind of love work on me and surrender that unforgiveness to him. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean jumping back into an abusive relationship. It doesn't mean you have to trust the person that you're forgiving, but it means letting go of that grudge against them, letting go of that anger, and it means stopping drinking the poison that's not hurting them, but is actually hurting you. And I, I have found that to be true in my life, that when I've stopped unforgiveness, I've stopped poisoning myself. When I've let God do his work in me, it's actually brought me life and brought me up to that next level. So when I watch Underworld, that's the picture I see. The power of a grudge to take two 
powerful supernatural forces and keeping those forces bound so that they're not getting stronger, they're getting weaker. They're not progressing to the next level, they're wiping each other out. So that's what I read way too much into when I watch Underworld. When you watch Underworld, what do you read into this movie? Make sure to let me know in the comments. While you're there, hit that subscribe button and become a Durbanian. We got Underworld Blood Wars, the latest one, just, just around the corner here. Super excited for that. So hit that subscribe button so you can be on top of when that review gets released and, and check out all the other reviews I got here. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Be on top of it all. I'm Durbin. Thank you for checking out Durbania.